Welcome back, YouTube, to another Python tutorial. Alrighty, so we are in the series where we are showing you how to get up and running with Python on the Windows operating system. In our previous video, we gave a high level overview about kind of just what this series is intended and sorry, intended for and who the audience is. And then we also talked about things like, hey, we're going to be working on a project. Hey, we're going to be using a lot of different tools. What are those tools and what are those projects? So basically, if you need a summary of what this series is to be, that would be the video to go watch. In this video, we are going to be showing you how to install Python on your Windows operating system. Now, I already have Python installed on my operating system. So what I did is I created something called a virtual machine. Short VM basically is how we call it. But a virtual machine is almost kind of like your own desktop laptop, but it's hosted in the cloud. And so what that allows me to do is I can basically spin up a whole fresh new operating system with no installations whatsoever. And I can actually walk you from start to finish through each of the installation processes. So I'm going to jump onto that virtual machine, which is right down here. And you can tell it's identical to my other one because I have my little desktop background synced. And from here, we are now going to install Python. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into your internet browser. Doesn't matter which one you use. You can use Firefox, you can use Microsoft Edge, or you can use Google Chrome. I personally use Microsoft Edge. I downloaded it a few months ago and I have fell in love ever since it came out. The new version. The old version I wasn't a huge fan of. This new one, I'm a huge fan of. Okay, so you open up your internet browser and then in your search bar, you're just gonna do Python. The first option that should come up should be welcome to python.org. What is this? Click that link and you're gonna be redirected to the main Python webpage. So this is the website where if you want to learn about anything Python, this is probably where you're going to go. Now there's tons of other resources out there. Python is a very, very popular language. And so there's tons of resources out there. There are whole websites dedicated to just learning Python. However, on the python.org website, you're going to get everything from the official documentation so every library that comes with a standard installation of Python, you're going to get access to what is called PyPy. So PyPy is where we host Python packages that we create. So again, when you install Python, it comes with packages that are already part of the Python installation and other developers go and create their own packages and then they host them or they put them on PyPy so that other developers can use them if they want. So I've hosted packages on PyPy. I know people who have hosted packages on PyPy. It's a great place to go if you want to use other people's packages. You can also find community members here so you can join different communities to learn more about Python and you can read through the documentation and you can see kind of just the companies that help sponsor Python, it's all open source. So technically anybody can download it and anybody can contribute to it. You just have to make sure that <laughs> you know, you're contributing the right content. All right, so once you're here, you're gonna notice there's a section related for download. So if you hover over that, you're gonna get this list of options. There's all releases, source code and all that kind of fun stuff. So this will literally take you to the source code so you can actually download it, it all. And then from here, um, you can also find, uh, what is it? Operating system specific installation. Sorry, that was a little bit of a tongue twister for me. <laughs> so you can see there's one for Windows, one for Mac, and then other platforms, so things like Linux. So great stuff here. Now we are gonna be using Windows, so I could go here if I wanted to, if I want the latest version. However, I'm gonna show you that if you go to the Windows section, you will not find just the latest version, but you will find pretty much every version going back to, I think, 2001? Yeah, 2001. Now, I don't know why you would want to download the 2001 version. There's not a ton of features compared to the 2021 version, but if you would like to explore it, you're more than welcome to take it and look at it. However, for the most part, you're probably going to want the latest version unless there is a specific reason. So sometimes when you start a job, 
they are writing their code to a specific version of Python. So you might have to install a different version. So that's why I wanted to show you this page because on this page, you'll find not just the latest version, but you'll find earlier versions. So if you need it, it's right here. Once you are here, you'll notice that there's different ways or different downloads. There's a 32-bit version, and then there's a 64-bit version. I'm not gonna get into the big differences about why you would do one versus the other. However, I find that if you install this 64-bit version, you, you run into less issues sometimes when it comes to using packages. So certain packages on Python are compatible with a 64-bit version. So let me think of one. There was one I was using for Azure. I could not use my 32-bit version of Python with it. I'd use my 64-bit. Some people ask, can I install both the 32-bit and the 64-bit? You can. In fact, you can install multiple versions of a 32-bit and a 64-bit all on the same operating system. So if you want, you could do 3.9.2, 32 and 64-bit. And then if you want, you could do Python 3.8.8, 32-bit and 64-bit. So you can install multiple versions on Python. However, when you do that, you need to make sure that when you're working with Python that you're using the right environment. Again, it's a good thing that you can install multiple. You just have to understand there's a little bit extra work you have to do. So in this situation, we will get the latest release and we will get the 64-bit. So I will click this and it will download. And you can see here, I can save it or I can just open it. I'm just going to open it. I don't need to save it to my system. And then from here, this nice little menu will pop up. A couple things, you can do either a customized installation, you're probably not gonna need to do that, or you can do install now. Before you click this, make sure you check this. So what this will do is it's gonna add what we call the Python path, or basically the location of our python.exe file. So the thing that basically takes our scripts and runs it, and it's gonna add it to our environment variable. So Windows operating system has a collection of variables that are called your environment variables. And basically what they do is they point to different applications on your system, right? So they're just a nice shorthanded way where if I type in keywords, for example, it will know what I'm talking about and it will just run that application. If you ever wanna see your environment variables, you can go down here to your search bar and then you can do environment variables, and then it will say edit the system environment variables. And then if you go here, you will see all of that stuff here. So once we install it, we should see it here. So I'm gonna close this, make sure this is checked, then do install now. And literally that's it, it's gonna install it. It doesn't take an awful long time, but it's probably gonna take a minute or two just to install everything because there's a couple of different packages it has to install. And then once it's finished installing, we'll check that it, it is truly in our environment variables. And then from there, I'll show you how to basically bring up Python in your command line. So your command prompt or your terminal. <clears throat> it's almost done. So. Oh, goodness, my voice. I've been, I've recorded two videos in a row and my voice is starting to get out a little bit, but that was my bad. I shouldn't have done that. I should have given myself a break. All right, so you can see here that, hey, they're recognizing something. Are you new to Python? If you are, they have a nice little tutorial for you, which is awesome. And then they also have documentation. And then they even tell you, if you go into your terminal and you type PY, it should launch Python. So that's basically how you verify it. And then they have a nice little section for, hey, you might be using Windows, Windows, <laughs> Windows, you might be using Python specifically on Windows. So this will give you some examples and some of the packages that come along with it. So I'm gonna close this out. And then from here, if I click my start button, I now see that I have some extra applications that have been installed, so that's kind of cool. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go to my environment variables. And I click this, go to my environment variables, <clears throat> and then if I look at this, I can kind of see it right here. But if I go to edit, I now see that I have it in my system variables. So that's great. This is a good thing. It means it looks like that part was at least installed correctly.
But what I'm going to do next is I'll bring up my terminal. And then I will type py. That seems to bring up Python, so that looks good. If you want to exit this, you would do quit and then do your little brackets. Those are curved brackets, by the way. Sorry, it kind of looks like straight, but they're curved. And then that will exit it. Now, there's a couple other things that you can do as well. So you can do uh, where Python, and then this will actually show you on your operating system where it is installed. So which folders are they installed with? So you can see here that if I go to my user profile and I go to my C drive, if I can get there, and I go to users, I go to my personal one, and then I forgot. <laughs> App data. So this is a hidden one by default. So anytime you want to see a hidden folder, what you can do is if you go to view and you look over here on show and hide, if I have this box check, I can see hidden files. Right now I can't, now I can. I'm gonna see if I can, eh, it's kind of hard to see. I wanna make it a little bit bigger so people could see it, but you'll see here app data, and then I think it's roaming. No, local, local, and then <laughs> I don't remember the rest. Programs, okay, programs, programs, and then you'll see Python, Python 3.9, and then here are all the folders and files that were installed during that installation process. So, you know, you can go through here. I wouldn't delete or edit anything unless you really know specifically what you're editing, but this is technically everything that was installed. This is the important thing because this is what you click when you want to start Python. That's your exe file. So every time you type, you know, Python here, you're basically starting up this one. So there's Py, you could also use Python, and that would work as well. But if you're on Windows, the shorthand notation is Py. Uh, and basically what's happening is it's calling, I think it's, I think you have to do where Py, and basically it, it starts up this thing, and I guess that starts the thing for you. I don't know exactly how it works behind the scenes, but it's basically there's two different ways you can do it on Windows. So that's pretty nice too. All right, so at this point, we at least have Python installed and we verified that it is in fact working. So what we're gonna do in our next video is we're gonna install a few more applications. So we're gonna install Git, that is our, our source control manager or basically our tool that we're gonna be using for tracking the changes in our files. And then we're gonna also install Visual Studio Code. So that's where we're gonna write our code that we're gonna run in Python. So that's where we're gonna write our Python scripts. So those are two really important applications. And once we have those ones installed, we'll probably talk about GitHub and we'll talk about how we can create a repository to host our code. And then we will clone that repository to our local system. And then we will start working on our project. However, if you do have any questions at this point or you run into any installation issues, feel free to put those down in the comments below. If I don't know the answer, maybe somebody else will and they can kind of help guide you through the process. But I would say at this point, you just wanna make sure that you have Python installed before you move to the next video. So thanks again for watching everybody. We'll see you in video number three. Thanks again.